It gets to this time of year when someone usually asks the question, is it cheaper to leave your heating on a low constant temperature all day, or should you be turning it off and on as you need it? I'm guessing most of you, like me, for years were told that leaving the heating on is just a waste of money. The conventional wisdom says to only heat your home when you're in it. But what if that conventional wisdom is wrong? What if, for some of us, leaving the heating on all day is actually the more efficient, more cost-effective option? Today, we're not going to just answer that with a simple yes or no. We're going to deep dive into the nuanced truth behind this question because the right answer depends entirely on what's heating your home. The truth is, the advice for a traditional gas boiler is very different from the advice for a modern heat pump. And as you all know, I recently had a heat pump installed, so this is a topic I've been researching extensively before deciding how best to set up my heating for the winter. In this video, I'm going to share the two simple ideas that can make a huge difference to how much you spend heating your home and how comfortable it feels. By the end, you'll know exactly which approach is right for your house and how to get the best out of your heating system this winter. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel, my name's Shan. Let's start with boilers. The boiler's main job is to create heat by burning a fuel like gas or oil to heat up water. This hot water then travels through pipes to your radiators or underfloor heating, warming up your home. Over time, boilers have become much more efficient. Older, non-condensing boilers, like the one we had in before our heat pump install, are stuck at one level of efficiency usually between 50 and 80%. This efficiency doesn't change no matter how long the boiler runs, which is why keeping it on all the time doesn't save you any energy. On the other hand, all new high efficiency boilers are required to be condensing boilers, and they work in a completely different way. The special thing about a condensing boiler is that it can capture latent heat. That's the hidden energy in the steam created when the fuel burns. While old boilers just let these hot gases and steam escape through the flue, a condensing boiler has a bigger part called a heat exchanger. This part cools the exhaust gases until the steam turns back into water. This change of state releases a ton of extra energy, which the boiler then uses for heating, making it much more efficient, often over 90%, compared to the 76% efficiency of my old non-condensing gas boiler. This process works best when the water coming back from the radiators is cool, ideally below 55 degrees Celsius. When the system runs at a low temperature, i.e. the flow temperature, the return water stays cool, the boiler gets the most out of the condensation effect, and it runs at its highest efficiency. This means that running the boiler for longer periods at lower temperatures can actually unlock its best performance. A big change from the old on-off method. A bonus is that running your system this way is also better for it in the long run. It reduces stress on parts, slows down rust, and helps the system last longer. A heat pump is a different beast. It doesn't create heat, it moves it. Think of it as a fridge working in reverse. It uses a small amount of electricity to pull heat from a cooler place, usually the air outside, and move it inside your home. This is why heat pumps are so incredibly efficient. A heat pump's performance is measured by its coefficient of performance, or COP, which is a fancy way of saying how much heat it produces for every unit of electricity it uses. A heat pump with a COP of 3 gives you 3 kWh of heat for every 1 kWh of electricity it uses, making it 300% efficient. This level of efficiency is impossible for a boiler that burns fuel, which is capped at around 90-98% to efficiency. The key thing to know is that a heat pump's efficiency isn't constant. The COP drops as the outside temperature drops. When it's really cold, the heat pump has to work harder to pull heat from the air, so its efficiency goes down. A more accurate number is the Seasonal Coefficient of Performance, or SCOP, which measures the efficiency over the whole heating season, giving you a better idea of its real-world performance. One of the most important things to remember about heat pumps is that they're at least efficient when they first turn on. The compressor and fans need a lot of power to get started, and the system works hardest to get your home warm from a cold start. This power surge, along with the inefficiency of turning on and off all the time, makes the on-off heating strategy a really bad idea for heat pumps. This is a huge difference from boilers and the main reason for a different heating approach. The heating strategy you choose is also directly linked to how your home is built. The two most important factors are insulation and radiator size, because they determine how hard your heating system has to work. A huge amount of your home's heat escapes through the roof, walls and floors, 
In homes with no insulation, a quarter of the heat is lost through the roof alone. This heat loss forces your heating system to work much harder to keep the temperature up, which uses more energy and ultimately costs you more money. This is especially important for heat pumps. A poorly insulated home will lose a lot of heat, forcing the heat pump to produce heat at a higher temperature to keep up. This is a big problem, because as we talked about, a heat pump's efficiency drops as its required output temperature increases, and as the outside temperature drops. It's a vicious cycle. Poor insulation means more heat loss, which makes the heat pump less efficient. Even though heat pumps are still more energy efficient than boilers in poorly insulated homes, the financial savings are smaller. So a great way to get the most out of your heat pump is to first invest in better insulation. Common insulation upgrades include loft insulation, cavity wall insulation for homes built after the 1930s, and solid wall insulation for old properties. The other key thing to think about, especially for heat pump owners, is the size of your radiators. Heat pumps are most efficient when they run at a lower flow temperature, usually between 35 and 45 degrees Celsius. This is much cooler than the 65 to 70 degrees Celsius of a traditional boiler. A radiator's heat output depends on how big its surface area is and how hot it is compared to the room. This means that to give off the same amount of heat as a hot, small boiler-powered radiator, a heat pump-powered radiator needs to be significantly larger. For a home that loses 500 watts of heat, a boiler running at a high temperature might only need a radiator with an output of 758 watts. A heat pump, however, running at a lower temperature would need a much bigger radiator, with an output of 1536 watts to meet the same need. Luckily, modern double or triple panel radiators can have a larger surface area to give off more heat without taking up more wall space by being deeper. When it comes to running costs, it's a bit complicated, especially in the UK. Because electricity prices are much higher than gas prices per kilowatt hour, a heat pump might be the same or slightly more expensive to run each year than a modern gas boiler. This is different from switching from an older, less efficient boiler, or if you have solar panels, battery storage, and an off-peak tariff, where a heat pump can offer instant and big savings. For home switching from oil or electric heating, a heat pump is cheaper to run from day one, saving hundreds of pounds every year. To help with the high upfront cost of installing a heat pump, the UK government has a program called the Boiler Upgrade Scheme or BUS. It provides an upfront grant of £7,500 towards a new air source or ground source heat pump. This grant is for homeowners in England and Wales who are replacing an old fossil fuel heating system. From an environmental point of view, heat pumps are a great choice. They aren't completely carbon free because they use electricity, but they are a form of low carbon heating that dramatically cuts down your home's carbon footprint. On average, switching from a gas boiler to a heat pump can cut a typical UK's household CO2 emissions by 1,404 kilograms a year. This saving can jump to 2,900 kilograms if you're replacing an older, less efficient gas boiler like our old one. The long-term benefits are even bigger. As the UK's electricity grid uses more and more renewable energy, the carbon footprint of your heat pump will get smaller and smaller. This makes heat pumps a future-proof heating solution with their green benefits growing over time. Gas boilers, on the other hand, will always need a fossil fuel source, so their emissions won't improve. So 24-7 heating, hot or not, starting with boilers. For most homes with a non-condensing gas or oil boiler, an on-off heating strategy is often the most practical and affordable choice. Because boilers create heat almost instantly, they can quickly warm up a home. If your home is well insulated, it won't lose much heat when the system is off. This is why our smart thermostat and smart TRVs work so well to help us reduce our energy use. Just heating the rooms we were using. For modern condensing boilers, however, the answer isn't so simple. A continuous, low temperature approach can help the boiler run at its most efficient by boosting the condensation process. By keeping the system's flow temperature low around 50 to 55 degrees Celsius, the return water stays cool and the boiler can capture that extra energy from the flue gases. This method doesn't just offer a little bit more efficiency, it also provides other perks. Running a boiler in this way reduces wear and tear on components, makes the system quieter, and can even lead to a more comfortable, even temperature throughout the house, with less air movement. While the money you save on a gas bill might be small in a well-insulated home, the benefits for your system's life and your comfort are worth it. Now onto heat pumps. For heat pump owners, the research and experts all agree. 
a continuous low temperature heating strategy is the best way to use your system. This is what's called steady state heating, and it's the key to getting the best efficiency and comfort. This recommendation comes from a few crucial facts about how heat pumps work. First, a heat pump uses the most power and is least efficient during startup phase. Every time the system turns on, it needs a bigger surge of electricity to get the capacitor and fan going. By leaving the system on continuously at a low temperature, you avoid these wasteful starts and stops, which can save a lot of energy. Second, running the system continuously keeps your heat pump's cop as high as possible. The system works best when it can gently move heat over a long time, instead of trying to blast your home with high temperature heat in short, inefficient bursts. This gentle, constant operation is what helps the heat pump stay efficient, even in cold weather. Turning the system on or off too much can also cause short cycling. This is a sign of a problem and can put extra stress on the heat pump's parts and make them wear out faster. Finally, a continuous heating approach simply feels better. Instead of the temperature going up and down with on-off cycles, a low and slow method keeps a consistent even temperature throughout the home. This means fewer cold spots, less noise, and ultimately cheaper energy bills. So in summary then, the best way to heat your home really depends on the system you have. But older boilers turning on and off still makes sense. For newer condensing boilers, a low and slow approach can give you benefits like a longer lasting system and better comfort. For heat pumps, the advice is straightforward. Always use a continuous low temperature strategy. This is the key to getting the highest efficiency from your system, avoiding wasteful startup cycles and enjoying a more comfortable steady warmth. So as a new heat pump owner, I'm going to be using a continuous heating method, setting a relatively consistent temperature and trying not to change it all the time. Finally, make sure your home is well insulated, as this is the most important factor for saving energy and money, no matter what kind of heating system you have. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments section below how you're reducing your energy costs. And if you've got an old non-condensing gas boiler or even a new modern boiler, you're probably wondering whether a heat pump could save you money which is why you should check out this video right here. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you in the next one.